Pennsylvania. They're here for the finals of the PBA Storm Flagship Open, next on ESPN. He is one of the best bowlers in PBA history, and he's also one of the most emotional. A week ago, he won his 24th career title, and it was big. The PBA National Championship in Toledo. The second time in his career, he's won that major tournament. And as always, he won it on talent and emotion. But Pete Weber is only the second-ranked player in the world. Walter Ray Williams is number one, and he proved what he was made of again in match play last night. Three strikes away from a perfect game. There's number one. There's number two. And finally, he gets his 300 game. And we get Weber and Walter Ray today. The number one and two ranked players in the world. And they're seated one and two today for the Storm flagship open. of Lake Erie in Erie, Pennsylvania at Eastway Lanes where the best bowlers in the world have been greeted with tremendous enthusiasm. And today, they'll be cheering for our five finalists. Our fifth seed is a 14-year pro with two career titles. He lets his bowling do the talking, the quiet Dave Arnold. In our first match, he'll meet our fourth seed who is anything but quiet, and neither are the color of his pants. We'll explain that. 24-year veteran Guppy Troop. Our third seed is a 15-year veteran and two-time titleist from Bowlingbrook, Illinois, Steve Jaros. Our two top seeds are the two top bowlers in the world. From St. Anne, Missouri, last week's winner of the national championship, Pete Weber, and the four-time PBA Player of the Year. He's been ranked number one in the world for 54 consecutive tournaments. Our top seed is Walter Ray Williams, Jr. And hello again, everybody. I'm Mike Bush, and thanks for joining us here in Erie. This is the final stop on our PBA Winter Tour and certainly one of the favorites among the bowlers. In fact, it's amazing these bowlers have even had a chance to bowl this week. They've been signing so many autographs. We've got a great group of finalists for you. Let's bring in the PBA Hall of Famer, my partner, Marshall Holman. And Marshall, among our finalists, the top two bowlers in the world and certainly one of the most entertaining. Well, we've got a great group of five players. I mean, this is going to be very, very exciting. We do have very, very, very big talent, starting with Walter Ray Williams Jr., the 24-time PBA champion, four-time player of the year. He loves it here. It's seven out of eight top five for him here in Erie, Pennsylvania. And he'll be battling to try and get this man, Pete Weber. Pete's qualified second. Last year, what did Pete Weber do? He just won his second PBA national championship. They're the number one of two ranked bowlers in the world. And here's Guppy Troop. We haven't seen Guppy since 1989. Last time he won a tournament, 1985. And do you think the crowd loves him? Mike, I tell you, they are pumped up for Guppy Troop. Let's start our first match. And in our opening round match, Marshall, we have quite a contrast. You couldn't have two more different personalities. Dave Arnold, the quiet reserve pro from Gilbert, Arizona, who lets his bowling do the talking, and this man, Guppy Troop, who lets his pants do the talking, and his bowling as well. And he begins with a strike. Guppy Troop making his first TV broadcast since 1989. Guppy he begins with a strike. He is exciting, and he is, uh, well, he was nervous last night, but he looks loose today. We take our first look at Dave Arnold. He, too, begins with a strike. Dave Arnold, his 14th year as a pro, two career titles, last one in Reno. Back in 1996, he has earned more than $600,000 on tour. And he was 0 for 7 on television until winning at Reno. This is a guy who won the first PBA event he ever entered, a regional in Rialto, California. And in the second frame, Dave Arnold opens with a double. And you'd have to give Dave Arnold the nod as far as being the favorite in this match. We'll take a look at this ball coming right at you. 
That's high flush in the pocket. Dave Arnold starts with a double. Guppy Troop trying to answer back. His second frame, and he got them all. And the people here absolutely <laughs> love them. You know, those pants have actually been on TV before. It was, uh, I believe, back in 1985. We take a look at the straight trajectory of Guppy Troop. And they're yelling for him. And look at this reaction. That's a double for me, too. He wants more noise. Well, he considers himself. He says his first goal in every tournament is not to win. It's to entertain. Then it's to win. And he's doing both right now in Erie. Great start for Guppy Troop, and if, if we're fortunate enough to see him for, for four matches today, Mike, he's liable to pass out when it's done because he <laughs> expends a lot of energy. It was a very consistent week for Dave Arnold. He told me normally during a week there are a lot of ups and downs for him, some good blocks and bad, but he's showing his consistency here in our opening round match. Three in a row now for Arnold. Take a look at the ball coming in light in the pocket. That head pin scatters the pins around, does the damage. Dave Arnold has three in a row. And Dave is Dave's a quiet player. That's his demeanor. That's the way he gets the most out of his game. But uh, you watch his ball. His ball's not all that quiet. And a lucky, fortunate little trip of the four pin for Dave Arnold. As he starts out with four strikes in a row. We have nothing but strikes after three and a half frames. Guppy Troop, pants and all, has started with three strikes, but that's still one less than Dave Arnold. We're coming back. Our opening round match here in Erie, Pennsylvania, Guppy Troop and his wife and son also on hand. There's Kyle and Sherry. They just they flew, flew in, in today. Flew in today from, I believe, South Carolina, or was it North Carolina? Taylorsville, North Carolina. North Carolina. And Guppy in the fourth. He's got four in a row. Uh, he likes to have fun out there. And, you know, he's, he's kind of like the Pied Piper. He's, got, uh, he's gotten people to come over to his side. Take a look. Nothing fancy with Guppy Troop as far as throwing the ball, but watch this fancy reaction. Oh, yeah, Mama. <laughs> Let's dance. Now, let me tell you something. 24 years on the tour, and other than winning his first tournament in Battle Creek, Michigan, back in 1978, he says making the TV finals here this week is the highlight of his career. And he's making the most of it. Five in a row now for Guppy Troop. We've seen only strikes so far in our opening round match. Let's take a look at the ball hitting right. The high in the 1-3 pocket. All the pins go away at all at once. Erie, Pennsylvania, no stranger to high scores. 1996, Bob Learn Jr. averaged 282 for four games at the Civic Center. And we're at Eastway Lanes right now. And that's the first miss of the day of ringing 10. The 10 pin is still standing for Dave Arnold after four in a row. Guppy Troop checking the scoreboard. And talking to his friends, talking to his <laughs> wife, talking to his buddies. And Arnold, one of the best spare shooters on tour, picks up the 10 in the fifth. So after four in a row, Arnold with a spare in the fifth. Our TV lanes today, lanes 21 and 22, and Arnold moves over to lane 21. You know, and in watching them practice, Mike, uh, they weren't striking all that much. I'm really rather surprised to see all the strikes so far here on the show. And again, the 10. Another great shot again for Dave Arnold. Wraps that six pin around the 10. Leaves the ringing 10. We'll take a look at this beautiful style of Dave Arnold. Uh, watch the six pin, second to the right. It's just going to wrap right around. Leaving the 10 pin. He says he's been bowling well the last couple of weeks. But he said he would get into trouble after match play began, struggling to find his line. He found it this week, but it struggled the last two frames. Guppy Troop now in the sixth frame, working on five in a row and leading by 12 pins. I like it. I got another one. And Guppy likes it. And Guppy's fans like it. <laughs> 
Guppy's wife likes it. His son likes it. The only one who may not like it is Dave Arnold. As we take a look at Guppy Troop outside line, watch the six pin. Is it going to come out? Well, we know it did. And here's just a typical Guppy Troop reaction. He's having fun. <laughs> There's his son. Kyle's having fun watching Daddy doing nothing but striking. You can see all the jewelry that Guppy wears. Oh, and finally a 10 pin is left standing in the well, seventh frame after six in a row. That's a great shot from Guppy Troop. Uh, very much the same thing that happened to Dave Arnold. You'll watch the six pin wraps around the bottom of the 10. Leaves the ringing 10. Guppy's always been a solid spare shooter with that straight trajectory of his. Shouldn't be any problem. You got it. I mentioned the jewelry. He actually wears two earrings, a minnow and a tadpole, in honor of Kyle and Tyler. Tyler is his 16-month-old son. Guppy Troop with a 21-pin lead. Our opening round match here in Erie, Pennsylvania. Guppy Troop and this man, Dave Arnold. Arnold in the seventh frame. Creeps up a little high. Looks like a little slow with his speed on that shot, Mike. And it's apparent that Guppy Troop has, has a crowd going definitely his way. But I know that uh, Carolyn and that's uh, Dave's wife and Alexander and Natalie are back home rooting for Daddy. Dave from Gilbert, Arizona. After four straight strikes, three spares in the fifth, sixth, and seventh. He trails by 23, coming to the eighth frame. And here's a man that a few years ago only could throw the ball straight. He's become one of the most versatile players on our tour. He can throw it straight. He can hook it. He's hooking it a little bit today, but that's got to stop. And that may prove to be the shot that will send him home early. The Greek church, 4-7, 4-6, We take a look. A little short. Didn't quite get the ball far enough out of the lane. It hooks early, right through the heart. No break. An open frame for Dave Arnold in the eighth. What's interesting about Arnold here is he was doing that in practice as I was watching him, and yet he still started with four straight strikes. Yeah, and he really seemed to have things going well. Four straight strikes, and he left solid ten, solid ten, crept a little high in the seventh, and the eighth a disaster. Guppy Troop needs to take care of him right here. And he does with the strike in the eighth. <laughs> I think he's trying to rival the emotions of uh, Pete Weber last week. Boy, I can bowl out here. This will not surprise you, but we're told Guppy is an alien. <laughs> not a U.S. citizen, a citizen of Scotland. Says he carries his green card everywhere, and he knew at the release that that one was going to come in high. Well, he got away with murder on that shot, and we take a look at Guppy Troop from behind. Ball started left of his target. He knows right now he's in trouble. It's going to go right through the nose. Don't split. <laughs> Got the break. And it's important for Guppy Troop to keep himself emotionally in check. You know, he's getting so excited that I'm afraid that he's not going to pull himself back into focus, you know, in time to make the next shot. But uh, right now he's in uh, very good shape. 40 pins up and uh, there's very little Dave Arnold can do. One of the things that we've noticed on the PBA Winter Tour and as Arnold strikes in the ninth frame is that the players who struggle toward the end of their matches but still move on struggle in the next match. That has happened the last two weeks. Uh, last week, you'd see a big game bold and the next match, they'd lose. So, uh, you know, Guppy needs to, needs to keep the focus. He's got a good reaction. It's right now Dave Arnold trying to get something going leaves the 10 pin in the 10th frame it'll be a fifth place finish for Dave Arnold Dave Arnold does not set a lot of goals for himself in terms of having to win majors or tournaments specific tournaments or to become player of the year 
He says he just wants to keep getting better, and he really had a nice week this week. Well, and he certainly has been getting better, as I alluded to earlier. Used to throw the ball only one particular way, very direct. He has learned how to open up the lane, hook the ball with this new kind of equipment, and really made him a power player and a powerful force to be reckoned with and he on finishes, a week-to-week -week basis. He finishes with a 2.09 in our opening round match. And Guppy Troop tells the crowd to give Dave Arnold a big round of applause as Guppy will finish out the opening round. And nine in the tenth. Well, and it will be at least one more one more game of those tight, pants. You, know <laughs> <laughs> you already said the pants are a little tight. My gosh, you haven't worn them, Guppy, in 15 years. It's <laughs> a credit to you. You can still fit into them at all. <laughs> Last night he was wearing pants that were red but similar. He said they were given to him by Don McHugh. <laughs> Pants from the late 60s and early 70s. To send John May a message. I know the lights are bright. What about the sunglasses? Those sunglasses, he has a couple different pairs of sunglasses. Those keep all the glare out. He has another pair with one lens is yellow and one is kind of a pinkish color, but he's opt for the ones with the to keep the glare down. The glare from his pants? He's an alien. I think that is the glare. <laughs> the glare from his pants. <laughs> and our final score in match number one, our opening round match here in Erie. Okay. Guppy Troop over Dave Arnold, 247 to 209. Up next for Guppy is Steve Jarrow. Let's go down to Marshall Holman. Guppy, that was absolutely amazing. Do you have any energy left for the next match? I don't know, but I'll tell you what. I just I made my career right there. So, I mean, to bowl another game is great. If not, I'm going to enjoy myself. But All right, Kyle, yeah, what, do you, bowl, what do you think of Dad? Is he going to win the next match? Yeah. Well, that's it. a yes from the young Mr. Troop, and I think that the elder Mr. Troop has got it in him. So uh, go get him, buddy. Thank you, Marshall. All right. Catch you later. All right, back to you, Mike. Okay, Marshall. Steve Jaros may have something to say about that in our... Second round match. Jaros from Bolingbrook, Illinois, is ranked 12th by the PBA. It's his 15th year as a pro. He has two career titles, winning back in 1993. He's earned more than a half a million dollars on tour. In addition to his two career titles, he also has 15 regional titles. So Jarris in our second round match against Guppy Troop. That was just a practice roll for Steve Jarris. And Guppy Troop once again inciting this crowd. Troop from Taylorsville, North Carolina. Can he pull his concentration back? That is the question. You know, I've seen him cross over before. And, you know, most people be embarrassed by doing that. And not our Guppy Troop. He loves it. Brooklyn strike? That's all right. We'll just take a look. Watch the way the ball is just down early. Not much follow through. Pretty nice result. And that's the way our second round match begins. And now Jaros on lane 22. Uh, he split the last time a practice shot on lane 22. He threw the ball, came in high. Leaves the two pin. Makes sure, he makes sure that he doesn't come in high this time. The ball is light in the pocket. Fortunate just to leave the two. Shouldn't have any problem converting the two pin. Jaros got off to a bad start last week in Toledo. And he told me that it was a matter of deciding should he go home or should he work on his game. So he stayed two days after the national championship in Toledo and discovered that he had been trying to throw the ball just a little too hard, which is not his game. He slowed down his pace, drove over to Erie, and here he is. Our third seed. Really has become one of the, one of the very, very good players on our tour in the last four or five years. And it shot there in the first frame. He strikes in the second. Shots like that that have made him a great player. He has the ability to 
Had the ball set up in the pocket. We'll see the ball as it comes in high flush in the pocket, but it almost looked like it was going high for a moment. Took care of all the pins as we see Guppy Troop now up on lane 22. That's got to hurry. Perhaps yeah. overcompensating, he had come high a couple of times in a row. <laughs> There's no doubt in my mind. As he's laughing about that, I, I don't know. I never, I've left that a few times and I've never laughed. <laughs> you can see his last PBA title came back in 1985. He's won eight titles in his career and leaves the open frame. And there's a very tough way for Guppy Troop right now to start. He's now, not only did he open in the second frame, but he lost a lot of count. He's down 16 pins after two frames. And really, he's thrown two shots this game and neither one have been very good. That's a better looking shot. And he got it. In the third. A strike for Troop. Take a look at Guppy Troop. He finally got it back in that groove again. And very prophetic what you said earlier, Mike, about winning the first match and now struggling in the second. That can't keep going forever, I would think. And Steve Juros in the third. There's the 10 pin. Almost leaves the 7 10 on a very good shot on lane 22. Take a look at the ball coming right at you. Now hooking into the pocket. Five pin gets the seven, but the six does not get the ten. One of Steve's other problems, he told me this year, was when he'd get into match play, he says he started getting too worried about his opponent. And really, in bowling, you can't do that. You have to worry about your own game. You just have to take care of yourself. And sometimes it's, it's difficult to do. A lot of players don't even watch their opposition because they don't want to see them get a good break. For Steve Jarris, he needs to just take care of himself. He's got the talent to win out here. And in the fourth, he got the strike. So Steve Jaros is up by 16 pins, but Guppy Troop will try to come back. Take a look at a couple other finishers. Tim Chris just missing, finishing sixth. And Tommy Dilutes, he was also up there fighting for that top five. Dennis Horan finished in eighth place, and Ryan Schaefer from Elmira, Elmira, New York, finished ninth. This is Guppy Troop in the fourth frame. Needs to put some pressure back on him. There you go, Guppy. That's what you want to see. And so after opening in the second, Guppy now trailing only by six pins with two straight strikes. Guppy knew this was an important shot, had to have it. Knocks the six pin out, and there's the reaction. He says, I'm still here, Steve. I'm still here. Actually bowling pretty good in 98. Made a couple top 24s, cashed in another one. Only missed one week for three in a row. He got it. like Guppy Troop was given up for dead. He comes right back again with three strikes in a row. And leads by four pins. Well, take a look. Now, watch the six pin. It just barely, barely nudges out the ten. And so Jarris now in the fifth. Trailing by four with a strike can take his own lead back. And there's his wife, the former June Dobolakis. Now June Jarris. They were married back in September, three days before the Japan Cup, which made for a interesting honeymoon. He and his wife, June, traveling over to Japan. And he says June is his good luck charm. He's bowled much better since she's been traveling with him. Well, he better say that. <laughs> but it's true. For three in a row of his own. And Jaros answers Troop. Troop had three in a row, and now Jaros with three in a row. Putting a little more pressure on Troop, down by 16. Here goes that same replay. Ten in the pit, and the people are yelling for Troop. They want to see him make the comeback again. Stroked the ball very, very nicely the last couple of frames. And I'm a little high again. It's over. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he's laughing and saying, it's Guppy, it's the, it's the sixth frame, Guppy. <laughs> and the ball just cuts right through the heart. Same thing that uh, Dave Arnold left on lane 21 the last game. The four, six, seven, nine, ten. Nine, ten. No. And he gets eight of He gets an unusual <laughs> eight. <laughs> and Guppy like an open frame for Guppy Troop here in our second round match. He's still smiling. He really is having a good time. His, I think his wife's a little concerned right now. Knows that things are in trouble. He's 35 pins down. Still has a possible 225 game if he could strike it out. And the strike in the seventh for Guppy Troop refuses to go away. Steve Jaros now up by 35. So Jaros now in the seventh frame. And a very important shot for Steve Jaros. Really has the opportunity to put Guppy Troop away. Can he do it with this shot? The little, seven pin. Just a little bit of life left for Guppy Troop. Right now, Steve Jaris working on a 219 pace. As I said earlier, Guppy Troop with a chance to shoot 225. We'll take a look. The head pin goes to the sideboard, does not quite get out of the channel to take out the seven pin. Hard and straight. No problem with the seven pin for Steve. Still in good shape, but he would have liked to have struck there and put another one in here and got this game over with early. Jaros has not won on television since 1993. Since then, I mean, he's appeared on television nine times since 93, but he has not won on TV. He qualified fourth here last year. Oh, come on. You can hear him say, come on, as June approves. He knew that was a great shot off his hand. The bowlers can generally tell when they make a good shot, they know if that ball's close to the pocket or not. And now it certainly is much time for Guppy Troop. It's just a matter of making shots for Guppy. He's been a little tentative. That's gone. Yeah, he didn't like that one. <laughs> well, Gup, he said it was over a couple of frames ago. Right. And I guess he felt like he just didn't have it anymore. Uh, it's Lord. That's too bad. Look how close he comes. He almost throws his ball on the channel. It has no chance of hooking back. Not with Guppy Troop's fingers. He's a, he's a direct player. He's not going to hook it back hard. But he picks up the spare here in the eighth after leaving the one, two, four, and eight. His well, real name, by the way, is John Douglas Troop. He got the name Guppy because he bowled on a team called the Guppies when he was seven years old. He liked the name. He's been using it ever since. <laughs> and his wife, Sherry, and son, Kyle, they flew in today. And the uh, first thing Kyle did was ask his daddy for some quarters. He wanted to play some pinball machines. Sure. Get those video games. And Guppy said, not until I lose, son. Well, Kyle, you're going to be playing the video games any minute now. <laughs> So Steve Jaros, still 34 has, pin lead. But still has work to do. Uh, just has to fill frames. If he were to strike here, it would certainly be over. In the ninth, he got it. He's your winner. 33-year-old Steve Jaros from Bolingbrook, Illinois, has advanced to our third round match where he will meet Pete Weber. I just took a look down and saw his wife, June, and... Steve threw that ball, he was very composed, and it was no big deal, and he knows he won the match, and boy, June was, she's happy. <laughs> there she is. She is very, very pleased. She was worried about it. Wants to stay in stroke for the next match. And as we have talked about, it is so important. Now let's turn it up! Come on! <laughs> Now, Guppy only has about another couple minutes of TV time. He wants to take full advantage. No, Guppy. Mm -mm. I don't like that lane. <laughs> <laughs> lane 22 is not a friend of Guppy Troop. Oh, what a great character like Guppy line, Troop man. is. He's 48 years old. And Jarek will about roll out on 21. He Go says ahead. his goal, Marshall, is to live to 50. Yeah, he's got, <laughs> he's got what we call very short-term goals. <laughs> Well, let's hope he lives a lot longer than that. He's yeah. a lot of fun. He's a breath of fresh air. Although, I, 
Guppy, better you wearing those slacks than me, my friend. Well, he said he hasn't worn those since 1985, and he did have to pour himself into those today. And with any luck, we'll wait another 14 or 15 years before we see him again. As Jarrett cuts right through the nose and only gets four pins on the fill, but it will be more than enough for 243 game. Final roll of the week for Guppy Troop. And appropriately, he strikes in the 10th. A standing ovation for Guppy Troop, the crowd favorite here in Erie. He says when he was a kid, he lived in Erie for about six months as his parents were bouncing around from city to city after coming over from Scotland. And the crowd still loves Guppy Troop, but he's defeated by Steve Jarrett, who moves on to our next round. Match is coming up here at the Storm Flagship Open. Pete Weber and Steve Jarrett. But first, here's this week's bowling tip from the PBA Hall of Famer and my partner, Marshall Holman. We've seen a lot of changes in our sport over the last couple of years, and lane maintenance is certainly no exception. Here to help explain how the oil is applied onto the lane is PBA champion John Force, now working for the Cagle Corporation. The Cagle Company, they do the lane maintenance for our tour, and John, it's good to have you with us. Thanks a lot, Marshall. All right, now take us through what's entailed in oiling a lane. First of all, we check the topography of the lane. Every lane has a personality, every center has a personality. So there's actually some high spots and low spots on the lane. Crowns and depressions. That's what All we're right. calling. Okay, now this is this is where you check to see how much oil is actually being used for the lane. Yes, we're using we're checking the pattern right now, going into our our test tube, check the calibration of exactly how much oil per lane. And it's more oil than used to be used in years past. We used to use about a quarter of an ounce maybe ten years ago. Now we're over an ounce and a quarter per lane. Okay, the machine, the Sanks machine is going back down the lane, applying the oil, getting ready for the bullers to come out, and what is the technician doing here? He's just double checking to make sure that the machine properly puts the oil down exactly where and, and on the lanes, and every lane the same from one end of the house to the other. All right, well, thank you very much, John. You know, as you can see, lane maintenance truly turned into a science, and if you'd like to know more about lane maintenance, you can contact the foundation. That's an organization created by John Davis, the president of Kegel Company, the foundation brings fair conditions to competitive events worldwide. And so whether you're a high average league bowler or just a newcomer to the game, if you know a little bit more about lane maintenance, it can certainly help to make the enjoyment level and that striking level of your game go up. And just a few minutes ago, Guppy Troop kept his pants on, thank goodness, but gave away his shirt to a fan who obviously needed it. Pete Weber, though, getting ready for our next match against Steve Juros. We'll get to that when we come back. And Pete Weber is getting ready for Steve Juros in our third round match. And once again, we go down to Marshall Holman. Walter, your opportunity to get the 25 titles today. You may be bowling Pete Weber. He has 24 also. Is it important to get there first? Well, I don't know if it's important to get there first, but I definitely want to get there first. <laughs> Um, we've both been bowling great, obviously, over the last 10, 15 years. And I think we still got a few years left. So uh, 25, 26, 27 down the road. I know he wants to get more than his dad, and I wouldn't mind getting more than his dad. <laughs> well, I think you're both going to do it. You're in that final match. What do you think it's going to take? You said the right lane's a little tighter. Yeah, it's hard to say. Uh, I'm trying to figure out whether I want to play the inside line or the outside line. Um, I think it's going to take about a 240 or 250 score. All right, well, good luck to you, Walter. Back up to you, Mike. Walter Ray Williams, the best bowler in the world. And we talk about our top five finalists here, but here are some of the other finishers in our top 24. Sean Swanson from Springfield, Missouri. Brian LeClaire had a good week from Chatham, New York. Jimmy Davis finished 12th. He's from Houston, Texas. Chris Barnes, one of the fine young bowlers on tour in Wichita, Kansas. He was 13th in our third round match. About to begin, 33-year-old Steve Jaros against Pete Weber. And you always need to bowl your best against Weber, and he begins with a strike. A strike for Juros on lane 21 to begin our third round match. His wife, June, like that. 
Pete is the number two ranked bowler in the world. Last year becoming only the second player in PBA history to go over two million dollars in earnings. And that's the way he does it. And a solid start for Pete Weber. And where Guppy Troop was smiling and joking around, Pete Weber is all business. With emotion, however. Oh, yes. There is his wife, Tracy, who I believe is uh, Mike this week. And Weber in frame two. There's the emotion you talked about, and Tracy approves. Watch Pete Weber scatter these pins, head pin to the sideboard. Kind of reminiscent of Daddy Dick Weber when he used to knock that 4-5-7 out, but Dick Weber knocked it out going to the right. Pete, he makes him go over to the left. Early pressure. Look out. Her. My gosh, what a shot. It looked as if it was going into the channel, and then it looked like it might hook high. <laughs> then, it, then it looked like it was perfect and ended up being a 10-pin. Weber, Weber says, can I see that again? A very unusual high flush 10-pin for Steve Jarris. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to take a look as he makes the 10 pin. Let's, I want to take a look to see exactly how that 10 pin stands up. Wow, that's right. Yeah, I'll, I will say wow as well. Watch how close he comes to going in the channel. Looks like it's gone right there. Whoa. Now it hooks up high, and that is just odd. <laughs> <laughs> so a strike and a spare for Jeros as he moves to the third frame down by 10. His first job as a teenager was in a bowling center, which gave him a chance to really work on his game. He strikes on lane 21, and that ball was a good four boards left of where the one went on lane 22. You don't want to mess around with that kind of a burgundy colored board because it, it ain't going to be hooking out of that one. Yeah, it's interesting that you talk about the different boards because to the naked eye, all bowling lanes look pretty much the same. They're about 42 inches wide, about 60 feet long, but they aren't the same at all. And, and we talked about this early in the season, Marshall, but they're actually a lot like putting greens, aren't they? Yes, they are. And we'll take a look at Weber as he does not get the ball to the right or fast enough either. A little slow and a little pull. Look out. Uh -oh. And he goes right through, chops the three off the 6'10". But he's doing the right thing. You know, if you took a look at Pete after he missed that, he's, he didn't get angry with himself. It was sort of, okay, that's all right. Only down by seven pins. Maybe the toughest thing to do is to forget about that role and to move on to the next one. Yeah, and we'll see Walter Ray in the next match. He's the best at being his best friend out there. As Pete Weber comes right back and strikes again. You know, sometimes you're out there all by yourself. You've got to be able to say, that's okay. You know, I still have plenty of game left. Jaros now in the fourth frame with an opportunity. Plus seven after Weber leaves the open frame in the third. Good shot. Two in a row now for Steve Jaros. If we take a look at some more finalists, that's Curtis Odom finishing 14th and Mike Edwards in 15th place. Jaros was our third seed. And this is our third round match for three in a row. Steve yeah, Jaros applying the pressure. Pete Weber must answer back. Last time on lane 22, left the 3 6 10, then chopped the three off the 6 10. Needs to make sure he keeps his speed up. Give that ball a chance to get down the lane before it dives back to the left. Much better shot. Came in a little light, however. Well, now he's got he's got the famous highlight reel going where you high one shot, light the next. He certainly got that ball far enough to the right. Actually fortunate to knock the 10 pin out and just leave an easy spare. But right now, Pete Weber is struggling, Mike, and Steve Jarris. He's got things going pretty much his way. Well, let's go back to this conversation about, about the bowling lanes being so different. 
and, and being like putting greens. 39 identical boards, and yet no two are exactly alike. No, well, they, there, are, there are inconsistencies on the lane. They're microscopic, they're minute, but they do have effects on the bowling ball. Pete Weber feeling very comfortable on 21, but he must learn how to strike on lane 22, or he won't have that chance to go against Walter Ray Williams in the title match. Pete Weber wondering what he needs to do. He trails by 27 pins to this man, Steve Jaros. And our third round match continues in a moment. And so Steve Jaros with a 27 pin lead in our third round match against Pete Weber. He's up in the sixth frame on lane 22. Steve Jaros trying to play the spoiler. He spoiled the fans good time when he disposed of Guppy Troop and now he's trying to dispose of Pete Weber and there's a break that Pete Weber is very happy to have and June take a deep breath this match isn't over yet this is the lane that he came in so light on but this time goes Four, right seven, through the ten. heart makes a little bit of an adjustment gives it a try oh and nearly got it very nearly good after the 10 but an open frame and an opportunity now for Pete Weber. Right, and now Pete's only down by 12 pins. And as I was saying earlier, it's a. We take a look, you can see that he just didn't quite cut it thin enough, doesn't quite get there, takes the nine pins. Lane 22, he almost threw the ball in the gutter a couple of frames ago. Last time, he pinched it a little bit high. Needs to forget about it. Strike yeah, in the seventh seven frame. And. Neither Jaros nor Weber seem to be having any problems on lane 21. We take a look at Eugene McCune, finishing 16th, and Harry Sullins wants to say hi to his fiance, Mark Roth, the Hall of Famer in 18th, and Jess Dayrook, the powerful lefty from Tempe, Arizona, 19th place. Harry Sullins is our statistician. Stacy's birthday. Happy birthday to Stacy, Harry Sullen's fiance, and Pete Weber with a strike. That cuts the lead to two pins. That's the lane he was having trouble on. Taking a re-rack on lane 21. Didn't like the way the pins were set up. Maybe a little bit, probably a little closed with the one and the three pin. A little bit too close together. In talking with Pete last night, he knew he'd have a tough match with either Arnold Troop or Jaros in his first round match, in his first round match, the third round match of our tournament. Ooh, there's the 10 pin. Almost, he really got away with one there. He got it a little bit wide. He knew, he knew he didn't throw it perfectly, but still had a chance to strike. Look how deep that ball, but steep, I mean, it comes into the pocket and the 10 pin almost mm. gets rolled over, but not quite. Make that spare, Petey. You're still only down by three pins. Weber with the spare. As I was saying, even though he knew his first effort would be tough, he wants Walter Ray Williams. Oh, you bet he does. I mean, that. It, let's face it, folks. That's a rivalry. I mean, they've both won 24 times. Uh, they they want to win. Jaros. All of a sudden, he's wow. lost lane 22. He liked it off his hand. That shot surprised him. Leaves the 3-6-10. Same one that Pete Weber chopped in the third frame. As you can see, defeated Pete Weber earlier in the week. And he makes the 3-6-10, covers it nicely to keep that lead, but you can see the two wives sitting next door to each other. <laughs> They're both uh, got a little pensive look on their yeah. face. Both a look of concern. Jaros, by the way, I'm not sure he wants me mentioning this, but he uh, he bowled a 129 in a 92 television event. Not the Run kind of record you'd want. No. That was the lowest total ever bowled on uh, PBA tour history on television. As Jarris leaves the 2-8 on lane 21, now only leading by one pin. Very important for him to make this, not an easy spare. 
in the ninth frame to last keep that you want to do though is leave the door open for a guy like Pete Weber because Weber smells blood loves to go in for the kill and he has left the door open Pete Weber if he were to strike in the ninth tenth and eleventh he would win this match Pete Weber can shoot 222 the best Steve Jarris can do 213 one pin down Pete Weber lane 22 Coming off last week's win at the national championship in Toledo no he still has not found the range on lane 22, continuing to give both players difficulty. Now Pete Weber, he thinks he throws a good shot, but this lane is starting to hook early, right in the front part of the lane. Leaves the 310 split. Now he missed the 3610 earlier. I really think he'll make this. He's generally a great spare shooter. Come on, Petey. No. Ooh, that's right, Petey. Make me look good. Made it easy. I didn't think he had that much. Well, he throws the ball very, very hard. He throws the ball hard. This is a non-reactive ball, so it does, doesn't hook much, and he's able to take care of the 310 split. Now down by three pins once again, but he can still, if he strikes in the ninth and 10th, I mean, excuse me, in the 10th in the the and the 11th, he can take that lead again. Important shot. On lane 21. Look out. Again, he comes in high, and perhaps overcompensating for what's happening on lane 22. Yeah, it looks like he's really lost his form a little bit as far as his release is concerned. And that can happen when you start struggling with the lanes. And right now, if I'm Walter Ray Williams Jr., I'm feeling pretty good about my chances of winning this tournament because neither Steve Jarris or Pete Weber is doing anything right now. Walter Ray Williams Jr. waiting in the wings, the number one player in the world, is also our top seed. And we'll get the winner of this match, Weber. Still important to get off the end of a PD. He switched right. He switched balls. Finishes with a 199. Well, it's very simple for Steve Jarris. He needs to fill 17 pins in the 10th frame. Any combination of a 17 filler better, he's your winner. One of the things Steve will do when he comes to the line is he tries to forget about the troubles that he might be having has put a song in his head. Well, he, had trouble on this. he had trouble on that lane in the eighth he's frame. He's singing now. Yeah, he's singing now. He's going to be bowling. That's right, June. He's there in the title game. It'll be against Walter Ray Williams, Jr. She's watching. She's praying. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those, those poor wives and girlfriends, all they can do is just sit there and hope. There's, it's a tough position. Weber finishing with a 199. And now Jarrett gets the nine. And Pete Weber is applauding Steve Jarrett. Sticks his hand out saying, nice going. Nice sportsmanship from Petey. Shaking his head. His bid for a 25th title will have to wait another day. Jarrett finishing off Pete Weber, 203 to 199 in our third round match. And that means Jaros will move on to our championship match. Gets a kiss from his wife, June. And next up for Steve one? Jaros. I don't know. That looked okay, though, going long. I'd rather do that. Will be Walter Ray Williams, Jr. And there's a look at our final numbers from our third round match. Jaros, 203. Weber, 199. They'll both have to be better if anybody's going to catch Walter Ray Williams, Jr. And with Marshall Holman, Mike Bush back in Erie, let's recap what we've seen so far at the Storm Flagship Open. Guppy Troop, the winner of our first round match over Dave Arnold, 247 to 209. And then Troop losing to Steve Jaros, 243 to 185. And then Jaros climbs the ladder, defeating Pete Weber, 203 to 199. And now in our championship match, Steve Jaros will meet Walter Ray Williams, Jr. Walter Ray, in his 19th year as a professional, is quite simply the greatest bowler of the 1990s. Mandy Peterson finishing 20th. Nice to see him in the top 24. And John Barley, he's there every week. Having a little trouble in the top 24, but he got there. Local favorite, Pat Malone in 22nd. And Lonnie Wallachek, watch out for this guy. He's going to be good. Steve Jaro 
Saros as he's getting ready. Walter Ray had a 300 game this week. We talked about that at the top of the broadcast. And Marshall just watching him in practice. Everything was a strike. Well, you know, I, I, I don't, I really don't give myself credit for having any kind of pull one way or the other, but uh, I think Walter Ray Williams wins this tournament. I, I just. As we take a look at the all-time money winners, Walter Ray Williams looking to stretch a little more room on Pete Weber, Mike Albee in third, Brian Voss Boss is uh, the fifth all-time leading Wait, money who's winner. The, who's number four? I don't Man. know. I, how come I had to pray for breakfast this morning? <laughs> <laughs> if Steve Jarris expects to win this tournament, I would think 203 wouldn't be enough. All it took to beat Pete Weber, 203 to 199. Jaros, first roll of our championship match. And he's still struggling. The 2 8 10. Slow down, slow down. He says to slow it down. <laughs> you were saying earlier that he was getting a little too fast with his speed. He likes to throw the ball slower. Got a little excited in the first frame. This is basically about a thousand to one shot for him to make this. So an open frame in the first frame of our championship match for Steve Jarrett. And here comes Walter Ray Williams, Jr. And Walter Ray was telling me earlier that he wants to say hi to his wife, Paige Pennington, who is at home and not feeling real good right now. She's got Paige, maybe, maybe that'll make you feel a little better. Yeah, her back's been giving her some trouble, and I certainly want to add my well wishes to a, to a good friend, Paige Pennington. Interesting that Paige always travels with Walter Ray and Walter got off to a poor start in 1998 missing the cut in his first three tournaments because Paige was home with the bad back and now seemingly he's got it together although there he leaves the four pin now a chance to take an early big lead still up by 11 pins and uh, they call him Deadeye that's his nickname and Folks, he doesn't miss too many single pin spares. Yeah. He's got such great concentration. You talk about dead eye, he's also, we've talked about this before, a six-time world horseshoe pitching champion. Yeah, he's got great confidence. You know, he's, he's yeah. been he's been on top for so long that he uh, he really fears nothing and has an advantage before he even gets started. Jeros. In the second frame, Let's see if he's got lane 22 down. He does not. Came in late. Well, he he started struggling late in the last game, Mike, and it's continued. This ball gets out wide and does not make it back. It leaves the one, two, and ten. Very makeable washout. And really, you just you just can't give Walter Ray that kind of an edge that early and expect to have a chance to win. He's got it. No. Good effort from Steve, but. Wasn't able to get the head pin over to the 10 pin. So he begins with a nine and then another nine. Two open frames for Jaros. Well, I remember watching the great Mark Roth bowling on TV, starting out with 18 in the second, and all he did was shoot 258. <laughs> Got the next 10 strikes. But the 10 pin is still there for Jaros. Well, a better shot for Steve Jaros, but right now... Uh, he needs strikes, and he needs to settle down if he wants a chance against Walter Ray Williams. And he misses. Look at that, my gosh. You know, right now, it becomes, it, it becomes difficult for Walter Ray to concentrate because nobody is used to seeing this type of an opening this early in a game. Three open frames for Jaros to start our championship match. Did you mention a 129 game? I did. Walter taking nothing for granted. He says, I have got to try and shut this match out early. He's given me a great opportunity, but I've got to walk through the door. When's the last time Walter shot a 129? I don't know. Might have been when he weighed 129. <laughs> 33-pin lead already for Walter Ray Williams, Jr., and he got it. Two in a row for Walter Ray. There's the number one ranked player in the world showing what he can do. 
It's been ranked number one for 54 consecutive tournaments. The familiar style of Walter Ray Williams and the nice carry from the six into the sideboard. Gets the 10 pin. Come on, Steve. There he goes. Steve Jaros finally with a mark, the strike in the fourth. Boy, you really, <laughs> you don't have too many opportunities in title matches and uh, to start out with 27 in the third. You know, it, it, it throws away the, the, the great opportunity and and frankly, Mike, it's embarrassing. And and, uh, yeah. and I've walked those those shoes. I've, I've been there. Well, and it's so tough to do when you're competing against the four-time PBA Player of the Year, and there's that 10-pin once again. Well, he settled down as far as making good shots, but you know, right now he needs he needs to throw some strikes. We'll watch Steve Jarris as he throws the ball. It goes about out to the seven board, back into the pocket, but cannot make the the six-pin jump into the ten. Well, he makes a spare. And And now Walter Ray up in the fifth frame. He Boy. really loves bowling here in Erie. He's made six of seven previous telecasts here in Erie. Oh, there's the 10 pin for him as well. Well, he leaves a solid 10. I, I'll tell you what, in Walter's mind right now, he has not won this tournament. It's not over. So he's, uh, take a look at the solid 10. It was a great shot, Walter, but just left the 10 pin. He's still grinding hard. Doesn't want to give Steve Jarris any chance. Walter's spare ball didn't seem to be thumping this week. It was thumping it last yeah. week, but uh, it's still going dead straight and making them. What's interesting about Walter Ray is that even with all his success, four-time PBA Player of the Year, he was questioning himself earlier this year. He wondered if he still had it when he missed the first three cuts in 1998. Tell you what, he does have it, and he got a little bit of a break there, leaving the four pin. This is Walter Ray Williams' 104th televised finals, mm. and that puts it, him in some very yeah. rarefied air. I mean, a year ago, he made 14 championship <laughs> round appearances. 14, that's making it more than 50% of the time. Walter Ray Williams, Jr., with a huge lead over Steve Jaros, up by 41 pins. Walter Ray after his 25th career title. Steve Jaros has a mountain to climb here in our championship match. In the sixth frame on lane 22, he finally finds the range. Jaros makes his home in Bolingbrook, Illinois, a suburb of Chicago. He's a big Chicago White Sox fan. Well, right now, Steve, if you take it all the way out, you can still shoot 217. Walter Ray working on a 208 pace right now, so we're stretching things a little bit, but it's mathematically possible. Oh! And it's still mathematically possible. We'll take a look at Steve Jarris, and if anybody ever needed a break, it's you, Steve. Yeah, you got one. So two in a row for Jarris. Walter Ray in the seventh. He came in light. It's, it is getting a little closer, and my, my old partner and friend, Mike Durbin, used to say, if you can do it with a pencil, you can do it with a ball. So we can still do it with a pencil. But I, I do like your chances, Walter. 1995 inductee to the Hall of Fame. First player on the PBA Tour to That's go gone. That's gone. Mark. That's gone. gone. And, and we've got bear. And we've got a match. We have got ourselves a match, and he knows it. You can see it at the release. His lead down to 17 pins. We'll take a look. He does not get the two the ball close enough to the to the two pin, full enough on the two pin. It goes around the four. And right now, Walter Ray Williams is only up by 17 pins, and uh, he does not want to make this second place number 30. I believe he has 29 seconds, 24 first. Well, he musters up 
You saw the look in his eyes. Well, he, he really was chastising himself after missing that spare. He knows he's given Jarris a chance to get back in the match, and he says, come on, we need to get this done. I mean, you, you can't start out with three strikes or three opens in a row and, and win the match, Steve. Or, or can you? Jarris. Got a hurry. And once Jeez. again... I can't believe that hook. He said, I can't believe that hook. Well, I, I think he was hoping huh. it would hook a heck of a lot more than that. The ball gets very much wide down the lane. Never comes back. Another must situation. Yeah. I don't think so. And another That's open terrible. frame. Yeah. And fourth oh. open frame. Oh. They're almost playing a little bit of, uh, I don't want it, you can have it. Well, Walter, you've got your big lead back again. and Plus 35 now. Walter can't believe how nice Steve is being to him. <laughs> it's out of respect for a Hall of Famer. Well, I'm not sure he has that much respect for him. <laughs> and the seven pin. <laughs> well, with a, if Steve Jarris throws us, gets the spare here, he would have to uh, gutter out the 10th frame to tie that 129 game. So, so at least that's safe. And, <laughs> and Steve, I know this has got to hurt, but my buddy, second place, is, it's a great place to finish, you know, after you let the few weeks sort of work out the, the tension of it all. Now, Walter has finished second place 30 times. And another strike for Walter Ray Williams, Jr. As he will win his 25th career title. He bowled a 300 last night. No 300 today, but good enough. Well, he's lost Black tournament. Flagship Open champion. He's lost tournament bowling much, much higher scores than 202. That's the best he can do here, but 202 is going to get Walter Ray Williams Jr. his 25th title, and I congratulate you, Walter. That's quite a milestone. And Walter Ray Williams started the week in first place. And he has been there ever since. And that's the way he will finish here in Erie. He loves coming to Erie. He told me last night this is one of his favorite stops on the tour because of the great crowd reaction. These bowlers get a warm welcome here in Erie. And Walter Ray Williams Jr. puts another notch on his belt. Great tournament for Walter Ray. There's your winner, and he's he's smiling, and I, I think he's a little bit dumbfounded as he wins 202 to Steve Jarris 146. Let's go to our Gincoba moment of concentration, brought to you by Gincoba. And it happened in the ninth frame for Walter Ray Williams Jr. He still had to show up, had to muster the concentration and wherewithal to throw that strike. You see the reaction, Walter Ray Williams. He was able to get it done. He had the concentration. Think better. Think Ginkoba. We'll be back with our sharpen your concentration with Ginkoba, and we'll be right back. Walter Ray Williams Jr., the winner of our championship match at the Storm Flagship Open, as he defeats Steve Jaros, 202 to 146. And let's go down to Marshall Holman. Marshall? All right, thank you very much. First of all, Walter Ray Williams Jr., title number 25. Congratulations. How does it feel? Uh, it feels great. Um, but... Unfortunately for Steve, he didn't. He just couldn't get things going. It looked like the lanes were starting to break down a little bit, and uh, it looked like the lanes were kind of getting tricky playing that outside line. And uh, 
the left lane for me was all right playing kind of the outside line, so I decided to play out there and played a little bit more inside on the, the right lane. I think that gave me a little advantage. Uh, it looked like Steve kind of got in between the, the shots out there, and it looked like Pete kind of did the same thing the game before. So I was pretty fortunate uh, things went my way again. Uh, they don't always do that, but <laughs> Erie's pretty nice. I like him. Uh, Walter, how would you like a little bit of the spoils of victory? We have George Warren with the trophy. Well, you know, I've been in this position before. I've handed you one of these before. Walter, congratulations. You bowled a great show. Scores weren't that high for you, but you did, that, did, you did what you had to do. Thank you. Thanks, George. And with the check, Bill and Barbara Chrisman, the uh, owners of Storm Bowling Products. Uh, Walter, you bowled up a storm for number 25, okay? Congratulations. Congratulations, Walter. All right, thank you very much. Walter, I, I know I know Paige is at home right now watching, and she's not feeling as good as I wish she was, so uh, this has got to be real special for both of you. I, I'm sure she's uh, yelling and screaming. <laughs> I love you, honey. I'll be home uh, tomorrow. <laughs> well, we got 25 titles.